welcome. It's good to have you here in the classic Mississippi Coliseum. How do y'all like it? All right, we're doing a great renovation. You'll notice right over here to my left. We've gotten approval to replace all the seats in the Coliseum, and every one of them will be replaced before the Dixie National Rodeo, thanks to our good friends in the legislature. My wife, Leslie, right here, I want y'all to meet her. She is the reason I can keep going. Thank y'all. Welcome her to the Coliseum. It's so good to be here. I appreciate Leslie, our four children. We live on our farm in Simpson County, and uh, we are proud to be fighting for the future of Mississippi agriculture. Uh, this Coliseum renovation is part of an overall rebirth of the Mississippi Fairgrounds. I am in a process with our director, Steve Hutton, to make the Mississippi Fairgrounds great again. Y'all agree with that? It's about time. That's why we got the program for these new seats. We got a million dollars to make some improvements in our equine center. We have completely redone our livestock barns, even saving money, running this place like a business, and reinvesting in our facilities needs for the long haul. Uh, it is in this Coliseum that I ride my horse gun smoke out and welcome everybody to the largest rodeo east of the Mississippi River. I tell them welcome to the greatest show on dirt as I hold my hat up. Y'all welcome to the Coliseum and to the great Mississippi State Fairgrounds. But I want to spend a few moments talking to you about some things uh, related to Mississippi's greatest industry. Agriculture is Mississippi's greatest industry. It has always been $8 billion farm gate value, 36,000 farms in our state. You add to that another $16.75 billion economic value every year. And Mississippi agriculture is important to the state of Mississippi to the tune of one-third of the people who have a job in Mississippi, 29% of our people who work, 29% are employed in agriculture-related occupations. Let's give our farmers a hand. What do you say? Give them a hand. Keeping agriculture strong. It is not only that, but it is the lifeblood of our small towns, our rural communities like Braxton, where I live out from Braxton, that's three miles south of Star, where Faith Hill's from. And we have great cattle and timber uh, industry in my part of the state, but we've got everything else. If it's worth growing, we do it better than anybody else right here in Mississippi. Cotton, corn, soybeans, chicken that we're gonna eat a little bit, and we are number one in catfish. We are blessed as a state. Y'all agree with that? We are. I wanna mention a few things that we're doing. As a state, we are literally feeding and clothing not only ourselves, but the world. We produce many times over more than we could ever consume as a state, but there is a growing demand for local food and local products. And that's why last year we started the Genuine Mississippi program. I don't know about you, but I'm proud to be from Mississippi. Anybody else? I'm proud to be a Mississippian, Genuine Mississippi. You know, people talk about our problems. We have problems, we have issues, but we're working through those. And to our friends in the rest of this country, they see and know Mississippi is a worldwide leader because of our agriculture and commerce prowess. We're proud of that. And you can go to that website and find anything you want to buy, grown, raised, crafted, and made right here in the Magnolia State. We're doing it. We're not just talking about it. We're doing it, not just blowing hot air, but getting it done for the people of Mississippi, genuine Mississippi. We've got an international trade program we've been working on, and I'm excited about the results of that. We just got a $2.2 billion deal with Taiwan. We couldn't sell our soybeans to China right now, so we said, bless Pat, let's sell them to Taiwan. Y'all agree with that? And we got it done. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of value for our soybean and corn farmers. We got a deal, the president's been working on a deal with China. He's about to wrap it up, and when he does, the opportunity is going to be tremendous. This should have been done 30 years ago, but in the meanwhile, we've been getting deals with India, and uh, we've got a new trade deal with U the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement if the Congress will get off of their rear end and get it approved. It's time to get it done. I know all our delegation supports it. The rest of the country should, too. 
and timber deals. Timber is Mississippi's number two commodity, second only to chicken. By the way, we just ship, shipped the first Mississippi chicken to India, the first that's gone over there in over 25 years, and that's the world's fastest growing population. But we've got timber buyers coming here next month to Mississippi to look at our great timber and forestry inventory and looking at making investment in the great state of Mississippi. And then I've been working on agriculture workforce. Agriculture workforce, it is the most, it is the most significant issue we have. If you look in that magazine Scott was just talking about, we were proactively involved working with our state workforce investment board on page 48 and following, you'll find the career opportunities for Mississippi agriculture. The average age of a farmer in this state is nearing retirement age. And if we don't take some proactive steps, we'll be facing a major issue in just a few years with the state of Mississippi's agriculture workforce. Uh, that's why this coming legislative session, I served almost 12 years in the legislature. I still have a good many friends over there. And uh, I know that process very well, serving there alongside my colleagues in the House and the Senate. And uh, I'm announcing today that this year, well, this coming 2020 legislative session, we will be uh, sponsoring, we will be uh, finding sponsors, and we will be promoting an um, omnibus bill that is all about the future of Mississippi agriculture, the future of Mississippi agriculture. That includes ag workforce. It includes killing these wild hogs that are overrunning our state. It includes international trade deals for our farmers, and it includes economic development. Just the other day, we broke ground. We actually cut the ribbon on a, only the third agriculture chemical manufacturing facil facility in the country by New Farm, an Australian company in Greenville, Mississippi. They are doing their, uh, making their products right there in the great Mississippi Delta. What better place to be? We just broke ground on the world's largest pellet mill in Loosedale, Mississippi. And next week, we're going to break ground on the state's first wood export facilities at the port of Pascagoula. And all of that means agriculture means economic development for the great state of Mississippi. That's a fact. We're going to be including all of these type programs in our proposal, and we want to create an agriculture workforce academy in every single community college in the state of Mississippi. Let's quit talking about it and get it done. Y'all support that with me. I appreciate it. Now I want to wrap up here. Not only are there bright opportunities for Mississippi agriculture, but there are threats. There are real threats. Last year, I stood here and talked to you about the coming fake meat. Who in the world would ever think we were talking about fake meat in 2019? And then our legislature unanimously passed that great bill to, in plain Simpson County English, if it ain't meat, you can't call it meat. Y'all agree with that? We want to know our people are getting real meat, not the counterfeit, fake stuff. So the legislature passed it. I get to enforce it. I got sued by the Veggie Burger Gang in July this past year. And uh, we have been working through that, and as a result, we are going to finalize our regulations. They're going to dismiss their lawsuit. We're going to be enforcing that starting th next Thursday, November 7th. But I'm the guy who can lead and fight and win for the future of Mississippi agriculture because I am a trained attorney, a trained advocate, and I got a track record of getting things done and winning for the great people of Mississippi, and I'm going to be winning for Mississippi's greatest industry. I've never understood how a brown cow can eat green grass, make red meat, give white milk and churn yellow butter. Y'all figure that one out, all right? But the good Lord knows because he designed agriculture. It's important to him, and it's important we keep it strong. On November the 20th, I'll be convening our final Mississippi Hemp Cultivation Task Force. The United States Department of Agriculture just finalized their rules two days ago. 160-something pages of rules on commercial growing of hemp in the state of Mississippi. We'll be making recommendations to our legislature on that. And I want to close by saying uh, I just got a letter when it comes to fake meat. Fake meat, the lab-grown meat industry sent me a letter threatening to sue me. You know what we're going to do? We ain't going to let them sell that blob of stuff, franken meat, here in the state of Mississippi. If it ain't meat, they can't call it meat, and they don't need to market it that way. I'll be fighting for you in that regard. 
and uh, we'll just keep them out of this state. And if they come in here, they'll have to call it what it is, Frankenmeat or some such descriptor. Every farmer knows we get what we sow, what we plant. You plant a corn seed, you're going to get a corn stalk. You plant good seed, you're going to get a good crop. We get more than we sow, more than we plant. It will multiply because God designed it that way. And we, if we tend the crop and keep on working and keep on uh, promoting Mississippi's greatest industry, we will have a great harvest after we sow. And then we can all join hands together and sing that great old hymn, Bringing in the Sheaves. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Love the state of Mississippi. Mississippi Economic Council. Support Mississippi's greatest industry. Support our farmers. Let's get it done. Quit talking about it. Get her done. God bless y'all. See you later.